remember that they are changing my voice. When we connect Luke 12, 15 to Proverbs 12, 3, we see definitively that all of their arguments about the Bible are wrong. Okay? And the Bible is this kind of puzzle that was made by the devil. Bear with me now. We know for many, many reasons. Let me just go through this really quickly. A couple of very obvious reasons. One is that the Bible says the devil uh, controls the world. Okay? And keep in mind, according to Christians' own narratives, the devil, you know, killed Christ, John the Baptist. He crucified all these people. Why on earth would the devil leave the Bible alone? It's even called Bible, right? Bible. Okay? Bible. Babel. Babylon. Right? Why on earth would he leave it alone? There's all this idolatry going on in the Bible. In Jeremiah, it says the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely. It's clear. Now we see the Protestants, right, with all their racism and, you know, just like the Catholics, their colonialism, their white supremacy, Jewish supremacy, LGBT supremacy, you know, 20% of Catholic priests are said to be LGBT, all, all the child molestation in both Catholic and, and Protestant groups, what have you, okay? The Protestants argue that the Bible magically is infallible. That's outrageous, right? This is something that's very complex for no logical reason. Compare the Ten Commandments to the Bible. Okay, the Ten Commandments are pretty straightforward, but even they are confused a little bit, but it's pretty straightforward. You have this thick book that seems to contradict itself at times. There's all this kind of figurative speaking. Look at Revelation, okay? Why not just say it plainly what's happening? Why say it in this elaborate way, okay? And who's likely to figure that out? And who's likely to figure that out before, you know, they're married or something, before they have kids and they see themselves as, you know, obliged to... To conform to an evil system because they don't have the genes to have the heart to put God first. We can look at man's understanding of, of hundreds of thousands of years of breeding and reproduction and say with certainty that they were very much aware of the idea of genetic inclinations and crowd control. Okay, so when we look at Luke 12 15, it says, Be on the lookout for all sorts of greed, okay, including people who are making it harder for me to speak so they can pretend that they're important. Okay, what's more greedy and wicked than cheating me out of my right to lead at the most important time in history, right when people are being hooked to the fucking matrix, right? Artificial intelligence. That's greedy as hell. That's the essence of greed. You can't lay a foundation that's the essence of the greed, excuse me, of greed and wickedness and then think that you're going to be established. You know, it's the parable of the wise and foolish builders. It's Proverbs 12, 3. No one can be established through wickedness. No one can build on a foundation of wickedness. Okay, and it says in Revelation, right, outside the gates are those who practice falsehood. And so they've left their offspring and the offspring of the inhabitants of the earth with no alternative but to practice falsehood if they're alive because they're building on cheating the most righteous person that ever lived, Christ returning at the end of the Bible, which is me. See, when you look at this thing and we look at the abundance of evidence that makes it clear to the, that the average person knows that being evil is not worthwhile, okay? And there's an abundance of evidence that their philosophies aren't worthwhile. I mean, look at, look at, look at the types of groups in high school, right? Jocks, emos, goths, thugs with no higher cause, and on and on and on, populars. All these people live wasted, wasted lives, okay? Then they have the nerve to stand firm for their cultural values on the broad path to destruction. It's stupid, Okay? So these people are delusional because they're ignoring the abundance of evidence that evil isn't worthwhile, that their philosophies aren't worthwhile, that their philosophies are evil, okay? And they have a, like a sort of collective psychosis, a collective delusion because they keep going down that path anyway. And no servant can be greater as they order people to shun me, as people are misled by them and don't find the way, the way, the truth, and the life, which is obeying God through me, Proverbs 16, 10 through 12. The divine throne is established in righteousness. The divine verdict is with the Son of God. And it's very obvious what the divine verdict is. It's that people will be cut off from heaven after my flesh dies. Okay? I don't believe in propaganda, theater arts, you know, living Masonic-like lives. I don't believe in psychology and, and, and falsehood. I don't believe in, in living these, these, these things. Okay? I believe in living the pure truth and being willing to die for it.